Everybody should have a piece of equipment, a way to work out from home. Starting a garage gym is a great investment. In this video, we're gonna talk about a step-by-step -step guide to beginning your home gym. Step number one is gonna to be to pick a space. Pick somewhere in your home that you can work out. A lot of this stuff you see behind me could probably fit into a closet. Uh, you can't see it from here, but we have three massive gladiator storage shelves and that's where we keep a lot of the stuff and the kids' bikes are right here. It's a two car garage, so we have one whole stall being utilized as the gym. At first, it was just a little spot in the corner over there, but then it eventually expanded to be the whole first stall. They make stuff that optimizes space. There's certain companies that literally are based on the fact that you can kind of push it up and out of the way. There's adjustable dumbbells, adjustable kettlebells, different things like that. So pick a space. I would define it in your home, like this is my space, but even if you had little things sprinkled throughout, like a kettlebell in the backyard, your little dumbbells up here. Now that we have defined this space, we make sure to keep it clean, organized, and tidy. So we part ways with stuff we don't need. We try and maintain some organization. We try and stay minimal with the stuff that we do have. So like decluttering your house, I think is an important part of this as well. Make room for health and fitness and bring that into your home and make that a component of your house. I think that is super important. And that's gonna wrap up step one. Getting on to step number two. First and foremost, I needed flooring and I needed lights. Horse stall mats are definitely the way to go. I tried to go with some like cheap rubber, like gym flooring, which was basically like it rolled out and it was thinner than like a uh, yoga mat. So I would not recommend anything like that. They also make like the foam tiles, but foam, it kind of compresses a lot and it's not really optimal for like actually working out and getting effective workouts, hardcore workouts and whatnot. What you're gonna to wanna to go with is uh, horse stall mats from your local tractor supply. Those are gonna be the best bang for your buck. It's $50 for a four by six, so you just fill up your entire garage floor. And uh, now you have this nice rubber flooring. You can make it a little bit more cohesive by getting black Gorilla Tape. I knew I wanted good light, just like one little bulb from, from the garage gym wasn't gonna cut it unless you're out here during the day and you can open up the garage door every day. These are all tips that I've gotten from like different YouTube channels, Basement Brandon and Garage Gym Reviews and stuff like that. But the Burina LED strip lights, super easy to put up. It's not like recessed lighting or something that looks super pretty, but it, it honestly gets the job done. So gym flooring and lighting, it took this from a uh, dark garage to like actual, whoa, this is like a garage gym, right? All right, step number three is gonna be consider the type of training that you do. So what type of training do you do? I would say to focus on that when you are just getting started, um, really dial it in and think what's gonna be the most bang for your buck when you're spending this money to, to start a home gym and getting these pieces of equipment, what's gonna work best for you? For me, I had a wrecking ball heavy bag, I had a 40 pound slam ball, and I had a couple different dumbbells, and, that, and I was hooked. I, I got a lot of great workouts out of that, and it kind of hooked me into the garage gym life, then I was able to slowly add stuff over time. I really don't have much more than that, even still. Um, but what, what's gonna work best for you? What do you optimize? What do you find the most connection with? What type of training do you do? Do you power lift? Do you do strongman stuff? Do you bodybuild? And what you connect with the most is gonna be important for you to choose your equipment that you want in your garage gym. Because if you choose the wrong thing and then you don't come out here and use that thing, and then you're gonna be like, oh, well, that was a waste of money. Then, then we're all just gonna see it on Marketplace nine months down the road. Step number four, consider the amount of money you're willing to spend. This is a, an investment. It costs a lot of money to, to have a, this expensive gym equipment in your house. Uh, I think it's a great investment and, and a worthwhile investment if you're going to go down that road. But you do have to consider how much money are you willing to spend um, up front maybe to get the pieces that you'll connect with the most and then you can save from there and maybe add piece by piece as you progress in your training and whatnot. Uh, another thing to consider before you do spend a bunch of money is if this is even suitable for you, you your lifestyle, your personality, 
Um, are you self-motivated? Can you see yourself isolated out here in a garage gym, getting workouts in and whatnot? Or do you require the motivation and the social aspect that comes from going to a commercial gym. Before you invest all that money, I would say figure that out, know that about yourself, maybe start small, like um, an adjustable dumbbell and uh, an adjustable bench, because you can do so much different types of training with that. Yes, yeah, slowly, incrementally save more and more and add more and more to your garage gym, and then you have this nice, beautiful, long-lasting investment that will stay in your home for a very long time to come. Step number five is gonna be consider used versus new equipment. There is so many great new pieces of equipment coming out all the time from all these different types of companies. There is a long list of companies that specialize in super awesome garage gym equipment. It's like meant for the home gym, whether it's optimizing space, different adjustment methods, things that are very versatile, things that um, you can modify and do different things with that, that really lend itself nicely to the garage gym owner. Then there's a lot of used equipment out there on Marketplace. So you can usually find pieces of equipment on Marketplace for cheaper than they would be directly from the retailer. And then obviously like cost of shipping and tax and stuff like that. So you gotta take that into consideration. A lot of these companies are good about free shipping. Some of them are smaller companies and they can't really afford to do free shipping. So those are just some different things to consider. Look everywhere. Marketplace is filled with old rogue racks and different stuff, adjustable dumbbells, everything you would need to get a great effective workout and have a really nice home gym because if a lot of it is in great condition. But on the other hand, if you like buying new and you like opening stuff for the first time, trust me, I like that too. I've had new equipment, I've had used equipment, the marketplace, search it. It's a great tool, it's a great asset and you can find a lot of good stuff on there. Some other things to consider would be like kid-proof, kid-friendly. If your kids are out here running around and whatnot, my kids are always doing like the floor is lava on all my garage gym equipment. It is a dangerous place. It can be a dangerous place anyway with um, getting on the treadmill. If a child gets on a treadmill, weight stacks, their fingers getting pinched in some of this equipment, things like that, uh, very good to consider when you are buying pieces of equipment. You're keeping your, your plates somewhere secure. So this is like welcoming to your kids just as much. Like it's not like one of the places where you wanna be like, get out of here, you can't, even though that was me right now trying to make this video. But it's not like a place you wanna like deter your kids from being. That's a, that's a reason we started the home gym in the first place, to like inspire them and make it bring fitness into your home. It's if you start a home gym and then you're just like locking your kids out of there the whole time, like what what is that doing? I don't know. Anyway, so maybe just considering the safety aspect of that's something that I personally consider. Maybe I'm more paranoid than others, but um, yeah, if you're looking to start a home gym, a budget home gym, go follow my page and go check out my latest video on starting a budget home gym and, and get this garage gym journey going. Bring health and fitness into your home. Hopefully you enjoyed this one. If you did, please hit that subscribe button, drop a like and a comment down below, and let me know some of your tips on beginning a garage gym. Thank you. We'll see you in the next one.